Welcome back to Library Tracy to channel. Today's class will be learning how to make these beautiful trendy flowers details of a dress. It's very simple to make and it is beginner friendly. This is what you like to learn. Kindly stay tuned to the end of this tutorial. Thank you. Okay, so to make the design, we can see that this is divided into two. We have the upper part and we have the lower part. So we're going to be treating them separately. So the first one we're going to be treating is the upper part. And to do this, I have this paper as my pattern. So the length can be as much as you want. But for me, I have a paper of 8 inches by 8 inches. Okay, so this is the length that I am doing for okay. Okay, so I have a paper of 8 inches by 8 inches, as you can see. So now the next thing I'm going to do is to fold this into two. So I'm trying to create pattern for each of my petals here. So after folding it into two here, on the upper part, I'm going to be going inwards by half inch from the folded point. Remember, this is the folded point. So here, I'll be going inwards by half inch or two quarter of an inch, depending on what you want. And then on the hemline here, I'll go up here by two inches. Two inches or one and a half inches is fine. So here now from this my half inch, I'll connect it to the two inches upwards that I did here. And then using the curved side of my ruler, I'm going to connect these two inches to my M line. I don't want it too sharp. Okay. Okay, so I think this is fine. So I'm going to connect it like this and then I'll cut this out. So once I cut this out, I'm going to be having my pattern looking like this. Okay, so now we have five petals for that. And then I'll be using the same fabric for both lining and, same, um, and the main fabric. So I'm going to be cutting 10 of this petal that's five for my main fabric and then five for my lining so now i'm using this black fabric for this and what i'm just going to do now is to place this pattern on the fabric or you can just fold it into two so that you have something symmetrical that's something that will be equal on both sides and then just like you cut it you, put, you place it on it like this and then you cut this out so we are going to be having, we are going to be cutting 10 of these, like I said. And that's going to be 5 for our main fabric and then 5 for our lining. So I have one of each now. So after having this, I don't want this video to be long, so I'll be explaining what I'm going to do. So after cutting it out like this, that's the thing. I'm, going, I'm using a paper stay as my interface. So if you have a color stay or peplum stay, you can use this so that it can stand very well. But for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just going to be using a normal gum stay or paper stay. So now you give this a good press. Once it's lying flat, you cut your paper stay or color stay or whatever it is that you want to use exactly the same. And then you place it on it and then hang on it. You gum it to it. So after gumming it to it, I'm going to sew the five petals together separately so I'll, I'll be joining them by the side like this so i'll sew it separately i'll sew the lining separately that's five and then i'll sew five again together which will serve as my main fabric then i'll bring it back to show us okay so as you can see here i've joined the five together this is one two three four five for my main fabric then five for my lining also so you can see the paper stay that i added to this and i joined them by this side so actually you can just place this pattern on a paper and then cut it out and then shape it like this but i just want my same line to be showing that was why i decided to cut it separately and okay so after sewing it you just place the main lining and the fabric on each other like this and then you sew it together so you can see what I did here. So you sew it together around on the hem. You sew it together like this. Then after sewing it together, you sew it on the side also so that it can be clean. Then after doing that now, I'm going to be turning it out. And then I'll take it to my ironing table 
and give it a very good press so that it can lie flat so like i said you can use whatever it is that you want as your interfacing but for the purpose of this tutorial i'm just going to be using a gum stay so after doing this now we'll move over to the lower part which is a bit different from what we have here on the upper part okay so now after ironing this this is what you're going to be having and like i said i just want to be seeing this same line here so you can see so i want these lines to be showing that was why i decided to cut it separately so that i can see them but if you don't want this you can just place this on a paper and then trace out this shape on the paper so that you just have everything once like that so now to do the second one we're going to be placing it on the skirt part of the fabric for the lower part you need to measure the circumference that you will need to calculate the radius for your flare so to do this it depends on the folding that you want to have for your for your flans or peplum so now i'm starting from the beginning so all this that i have here is the allowance i'm not just going to include that and then i'll measure it to where i want it to stop and then all the foldings that i want so if one comes here then the other one will be folded this way and then the last folding will come this way so if you check that that is around 21 inches for me so the 21 inches i'm going to be dividing it by 6.28 for a full flare and then i'm going to use that as my radio so for to know the longest length that i'll be working with on your side you notice that there is one of the flares okay so here is what i'm talking about you can see this fold so you measure the circumference according to how many folds you're going to be having like i said and then for the length if you notice you will see that this peplum has one that is just long like this so that is the longest length for this peplum and that is what you're going to be using to draft the total peplum before you reduce it to this shape that you have here so now for this now you need to determine how long you want it to be on your skirt and then if i measure this and it and it's around 15 or 16 inches i think that's fair enough for me so i'm going to be folding my peplum using the 16 inches as the length so i'll be folding it into four because this is going to be a full flare peplum so i'll fold it into two first then after folding it into two i'm going to fold it into four then i'll measure my radius okay so the radius i'm working with is the 22 inches divided by 6.28 and that's going to give me around 3 inches so i may as well make that 3.5 because i don't want to use the exact full flare i'm just going to be cutting off one quarter of the flare and i'll show us why i'm going to be doing that so now i'll be measuring the three and a half as my radius and then i'm going to measure 16 inches for my length okay so now i've cut it as my fat my paper is not long enough so i'll be using this paper to do the illustration for us so that we we'll understand what i'm talking about so the total length i could get from this paper is 12 and half and i'm making do with that and then for the radius i'm just going to be marking two inches as against the three and half that i intend to use so after marking this round i'm going to connect it and then i'll cut it as also so after cutting it off like this i'm going to open it up and then i'm going to you can see the four points there so i'm going to open it like this and then mark out those four points because like i said remember that i increased my radius from three to three and a half inches that's because i want to cut off one of these quadrants so i have points there four points there and then i'm going to be cutting off so this is actually optional but i think I prefer it this way because I don't want the 360 degree flare to be too full. But before you do this, you should make sure that you measure this radius and it is enough for what you want to do. Okay, if it's not enough, you may need to increase it. What I mean is, this radius should be enough to go around all the foldings that you want. That's the 22 inches that we measured. But because this paper is not is not enough for our actual measurement so i'm just using this for the purpose of the tutorial so now we have these three three points which is one two and three so now to shape it out the longest part which is the 16 inches i'm going to be using this point as that 16 inches so i'm not going to touch it but from this quadrant now i'll start reducing it okay 
so here now i can do maybe six inches now and then from there i'm going to connect it to this long one okay so by the time i put it on on our fabric we'll see everything that i'm doing so i'm just going to measure this six and a half okay i have six and a half inches here so i'm going to measure it on all of the quadrants here six and a half and six and a half i'm still going to further reshape it because that is what i want so just connect that now and then connect this to this and then cut out this shape so now i'm going to be cutting out this shape And this part being the longest part, which is the one that is going to be on our side seam area. So you can see the shape that I have here. So this is the longest one. And then the fold is just going to be something like this. Okay, folding like this. And then the last one is going to fold like this. Okay, so now we'll start shaping it. So this one is the one that is going to go over to our side seam. So you can see how it's going to look. It's just going to be long, longer than the rest. And it's going to enter into the side seam like this and then the other one you're going to be folding it over each other so the first adjustment that i'm going to be making is on this side okay so on this shortest part here i'm going to be blending it and i'm not going to leave it sharp like that so i'm going to be going here i'll go inwards by maybe two inches or two and a half inches and then from there i'm going to connect it in a slanting form like this okay so if you are if you cut it and you're not okay with what you have you can reshape it so you can see that it's no longer so sharp we have something like this so if i'm not okay with what i have i can further go inwards and then just shape it to that over shape okay so now i think i like what i have so that's the first adjustment that i'm going to do and at every point in time if you have a mannequin you can just go ahead and try your pattern on it before you put it on your main fabric so here this is just me seeing what this is going to look like and as you can see this is the shape that i want to get and i have that shape there so i'm okay with this so now you can actually go ahead now and leave this as your pattern but i just want to still further make some adjustment on this pattern so on this first quadrant remember this is the longest quadrant that we have here so on this fourth first quadrant here i just want to also shape it in a way that this part is going to come out more than the rest of the pattern which is this one and this one so here now i'm going to okay so like i was saying i want this side to so just watch what i'm doing this is actually not compulsory you can just leave your pattern like this and then go ahead to add it to your skirt like this and then you have something like this which is also fine but like i said i just want this angle to be longer than the rest so to do this now i'm just going to connect it in such a way that i'm going to trim this a bit you can see that i'm trimming it and then when i get to this point i'm just going to bend my hand in such a way that this becomes longer and then the same thing that i did here i'll do here also so here also i'm going to elongate this now and then i'll further trim off what i have here so you can see the shape the new shape that i have here or you can just put this on fold now and then trim it out whatever it is that you want but i just want this part to be longer because if you look at the thumbnail it looks like the, this part is just more elongated so now this is the shape that i want to go for and then i'm just going to further trim this off Okay, but if you don't like this you can just go with the initial shape that we have so now this is going to be my new pattern you can see how it is shaped and if i place this on my skirt it's going to look like this okay so you can see how it but this paper is short so that but by the time i go ahead and cut this on my main fabric we will see it's better okay so we'll have something like this and you can see this piece is poking out compared to the others Okay, so that's the design I'm aiming to get. So now I'll go ahead and cut this on my main fabric, and then I'm going to cut two of these. How hard color stays to the lining part, and then I'm going to use them to turn each other. Okay, so I'm going to have to cut this on my fabric. You can see this is the longest part 
And the longest part is around 16 inches. So you can see what we have here. This is the longest part. And this is the part that we shaped in what? At the extreme of the other one. And then this is the part where I said I want it to just be more pronounced than the others. So now when I add this to my skirt, I'll have this elongated part coming out like this. And then this is going to be folding over this. And then this also is going to fold over this. So you can see what I have. And then at the end of the day, this part is just going to poke out like this. This is because this is what I want. So to further emphasize this point now, I'm going to be adding trimmings on the hem of this. Okay, so both the one for the upper part and the one for the lower part, I'm going to be adding this silver trimming that I have. Okay, so for the up for the low upper part, I'm just going to be adding it to one end like this, following this shape that I have. So I'm just going to can sew this or gummy twist depending on what you want. So I'll just add it like this, and then for this lower part, I'm going to be adding it to the outer part, and then because of the folding that is going to go on, remember one is going to come like this. So, by the time I fold it over, this lining part also is going to tend to show. So, anywhere that is going to show on the lining part also, I'm just going to add my trimming to it also to beautify it. So, I'll go ahead and do this now and then I'll bring it back to show us. So, I've gone ahead to add the trimmings to it and as you can see, we have this. So, this is the main side of the peplum. And like I said, there are some side that is going to be showing on the lining also. So I went ahead to add it up to here. This is so. You, this is what I was talking about. When you sew it, when you pull it, place it like this. You know you're going to be. I'm going ahead to add this trimming to it, so you can see. I just added it on the hemline. I sew it, so you can actually sew it or you use gum. But I prefer to sew so that it can last longer. And then on the lining part, like I said, some part is going to be showing by the time you fold it over. So I added it up to here where my folding is going to stop so this is what i was this is what i'm trying to explain so by the time you go like this remember you are going to fold this now and then fold this over so all this is the lining part that is showing so your trimming has to be added okay this side is the lining part as you can see so if you don't have your trimming trimming to this side it's not going to be this fine also on the upper part the one with the petals i want to also add my trimmings around it also so now the next thing is for us to fix it so i'll be fixing this on this blouse and to fix it on this blouse you can see we are, be, we are going to be fixing it on the waistline area so now what i'm going to do now the first one i'm going to fold it over like this and then sew it just to secure it so i'm just going to be pinning it i'll sew it like this before i start to form my pleats so this is the first one i'm going to sew this down on my blouse and then i'm going to continue okay you can see the way i folded it i just folded it to the wrong side now and then i'm going to sew it so after sewing it i'm just going to flip the excess over now and you start pleating this on the waistline so the first one which is the first pattern is the one we held down which is this so now the second petal i'm going to be pleating it like some form of pleat now on it and then the third petal also i'm going to pleat it anyhow you feel you want to style it and then the fourth one also i'm going to style it like this by just pleating it on this so after pleating everything you can see the shape that this is giving us so after pleating it this last one which is the most important one so i'm just going to be holding this with a pin so that we'll see so this last one that we have here you are not going to be pleating it like you pleated the other ones you are going to be pleating. you see this uh, uh vertical side here instead of pleating it for it to stand it's going to be folding along the waistline like this so you can see what i have there so that's going to be folded along the waistline here and then i'm going to hold it with a pin so after which i'm going to go over to my sewing machine and sew it down so for this now if you have a mannequin it's actually better you just pin your dress to this and then you start cleaning your petals to form the exact style that you want so 
this style that I have here, you can see what I have here is okay for me. So now I can just pack it here and here so that it can stand better for me on its own. But I'm okay with what I have here. So now I'll go over to the machine now and sew this. But like I said, if you have a mannequin that you can pin on, it will be easier for you to pin this and then manipulate it however you want. But we are trying to simplify this as much as possible, especially for those that, does, that may not have a mannequin. So this is what you can do to get this better. Once you get the first one, which is this, and then the last, this last one that is just going to be lined on your waist area, is going to open up and form this spiral pattern that we have. So I'm going to sew this now and set it aside, and then we work on the skirt part. So for the skirt now, I'm just going to open up the skirt. And then this elongated part, which is the longest part, is the one you're going to be sewing on this side now. So once you sew it here and you place your back bodies on it, it's going to enter into the seam allowance and then you fold it over. So it's either you show that if you want it to enter, but because I've cleaned this side, you can see that the side is neatly finished. So I don't need to really keep it inside my seam allowance. So I want it to be outside. So to do this, I'm just going to exclude the seam allowance then. And then I'll start here now, and then you're going to sew it like this so that you fold it over. So now that I've not sewn it, I'm just going to pin it. Just look at what I'm doing, it's very simple. I'm sure you're going to get it. If you have any question, just ask in the comment section, and we're going to answer your questions. So now I'll just imagine that I've sewn this by pinning it. So after doing this, now I'm going to fold this. Okay, so let me place it like this so i'm going to fold this like this and then once it's here so here now i'm going to pin it also so instead of pinning in your own case you're going to sew it to the waistline of this skirt you can see that i'm pinning this to the waistline of this skirt so after pinning it to where you want it to be, you must have known that when you are taking your measurements, you are going to fold this over like this, so you can see the way it is before. And then I'm going to fold this over and then fold the last one. So if you are okay with it, if you have not gotten to that point, you still pleat it a bit before you do your final folding, which is this. So I'm okay with what I have here. I'm just going to go ahead now and pin everything. Okay, so after pinning it now and it's staying in place for you, you just bring your blouse and then your skirt together and then place it on each other like this now. Okay, so this is our blouse and this is our skirt. So you just flip it over and then you sew both together on the waistline. Then I'll take it to the mannequin so that we'll see what we have. Okay, so this is what the blouse is looking like now you can see the peplum which is the lower part so this is the longest part and like i said i don't want mine to enter into the side seam so i just decided to place it outwards like this so this is the upper part and this is where we join the upper part to the lower part so this is the full view of the design okay you can see the way we just folded the peplum like this so what i was explaining was by the time you turn it over the lining is going to be exposed that's why you need to double the trimming here so that it will also be beautiful like what we have in the front and this is the full view of the design so this is the upper part and these are the scallops. so you can notice that this is not as standing as what we have here because i used color stay here and i used gum stay here so if you wish you can actually use a gum stay there also and then here i just tag this see the way i tag this using my machine so that it can form whatever it is so anywhere you feel you just want to adjust by the time you take it to your mannequin or maybe when your client wears it you can just tack it if you want it firm to the body and this is what the full view is looking like so if you want if you have like a cut out from your fabric and like this circle you can just cut it and place it at the half length there or you just look for a nice trimming and then you place it there so this is what we have i hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you enjoyed it let us know in the comment section like comment and subscribe to our channel and i will see you in the next one bye